too loud. <clears throat> One. Oh, I gotta change the title. It's locking it. I thought I changed it. It's why does it says untitled? Let's see. Oh, I gotta change the title. It's yeah, locking. it's not it's not showing. I thought I gotta change it. It's why does it says untitled? Hold on, brother. I don't know what's happening, but it's a. Uh, oh, it didn't change on this one. It's a lot here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and open this up, brother. Uh, hey, Shalom Amakim. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, Jagari Moso, for teaching his truth and for the world well. And peace, salutation to all Yahweh, out there pushing and defending his gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. As well as see believers in you, how by Hashem Yahushai, the men as well as the women, the hopeful elect. You know, this is uh the brothers, <clears throat> two of the brothers from GMS Hawaii. Uh, I'm the brother Kahana La. I'm the brother Gabar Yahuda. And uh, you know, we just got together through the spirit, you know, to do a, a lesson. You know, as you can see in the in, in the title, it says uh the darkness of unbelief, you know, and uh, as we were going into prior to the to start in the, the live lesson, you know, we were just talking about how our people really don't don't believe in Yahweh Hashem as as it is written. You know, they say that they love the Lord and that you know they'll do anything for the Lord, but they show the opposite, man. You know, and also you know throughout the week, I was lis listening to a couple of uh, uh, videos of different elders. You know, and, and live um, camps, and I saw a lot of the same thing. You know, just our people with that unbelieving spirit. You know, brothers talking about the chariots, about salvation. You know, and 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 other spiritual things that that are important unto unto our life. You know, because ultimately, uh, those that those of our people that are unbelieving, they're gonna perish. But those of us that that believe. Lord willing to the end, we're gonna be delivered from you know the, the the perils that the heavenly father is about to bring upon the earth, man. You know, so unbelief ultimately is is uh is gonna bring destruction, death, uh, and judgment upon those of our people that that don't that don't have faith in the Lord. You know, and uh, if, if I could read that image that you have there, it says, Oh, it's like yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is our John 12 and 46. It says, I have come as a light into the world that whosoever believeth in me shall not abide in darkness. And what is that darkness? That darkness is the ways of the world, the ways of the heathens, you know, which is ultimately living in sin. You know, the heavenly father sent Yahweh Shai for what? So that he could shine light upon those wicked uh, deeds that, that our people were committing. So that we could see and 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 repent and be like, damn man, I'm I'm fucking up, and this way of life is gonna get me what destruction, you know. But a lot of our people, you know, they like the scriptures say, or oh, they love darkness rather than light, man. And oh, the it. darkness, hard to bring it out. Uh, and 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 that uh, darkness of unbelief is 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 again gonna lead you to to be destroyed by the heavenly Father, man. John, that's right. Uh, this is the book of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For the, for the most high, slack you. Uh, yep, St. John, chapter uh, 
3 verse 18 he that believeth on me is not condemned matter of fact uh verse 17 for the most high sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved right so what does that mean so the lord didn't yahweh bashing out shy the heavenly father didn't send yahweh shy down here to condemn our people to, to you know hold on let me see what that word mean, that word for condemn uh that word for condemn is crino or crino and it says uh to separate to put asunder to pick out to choose to approve to, uh it says to condemn to go to the law right to call in a question to judge to determine so the heavenly father didn't send yahweh yahweh shai into the world to judge it and to destroy it and what world is that the world of israel that word there for world there um is cosmos which is a which is uh in which is um uh, an act of harmonious arrangement a con constitution or order of government which is us we as the Israelites, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the the, the harmonious arrangement or constitutional go order, govern order, or government on the earth in the universe, right? It's not talking about the circle of the earth, the inhabitants of the earth, the human family. Because if we were, if this place was really about a human family, we we all we wouldn't be treated the way we treated. Shit, if this is a family, man, this is the worst. If this all the world is one family, this is the worst family to belong amongst, man. Cause they treat us like they, the, you know, the wicked stepchild, the evil stepchild, you know. But it's talking about, it's talking about the Israelites, man. It's not talking about the whole world. And when you talk about the whole world, that's talking about the Oikumene sense, which everybody. But this is not Oikumene. This is Cosmos, which we are that at harmonious group that government. It says probably based on Komizo, which is the care or to take care to provide, to carry, to bear. To receive to obtain the promised blessing who was the promised blessing to the israelites man israel. you can go to isaiah what 45 and 17 it tells you that we were what a world without israel shall be saved world without end okay so the lord sent yahweh the heavenly father who is the lord on high then you have yahweh Shah, who is also our lord and savior the most high sent not his son into the world or to amongst israelites to condemn the world to condemn the israelites but that the world through him might be saved. So you have to see Yahweh Shai as he is, which is the Messiah, the savior of our nation. That's what his that's that's what his name ultimately means. But the only ones of the world that's gonna see that is the Israelites. I'm sorry, is the elect of the Israelites. It says, verse 18, he that believeth on me is not condemned. Right. So if we believe on Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai, if we believe on Yahweh Shai, we're not gonna be uh we're not going to be condemned with this world, with the world of Israel or with these Gentiles, with the world of the heathen. We're not going to be condemned with that. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Meaning, if you don't believe on Yahweh Bashan, if you don't believe Yahweh Shai or Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai, as it is written, you already, you're doomed. You're doomed to be destroyed. You're doomed to be judged. You're going to die in your sins. All right? You're going to, that's what's going to happen. Because he have not believed in, my, in the name of of the only begotten son of the heavenly father right so you gotta believe on a on the name of the only begotten son of the most high which is yahweh Shai. and this is the condemnation of and this is the condemnation this is the judgment let me read that word for condemnation real quick so I can. that word for condemnation in the greek is uh so I can, brother. Yep, again, it's, cre it's creases, creases, right? In the Greek, the word is creases, which is a separating asunder. You are a trial, judgment, a decision given concerning anything, especially justice and injustice, right or wrong. So he that don't believe on Yahweh Shai, you already judged, you already found guilty, of, and you're going to die in your sins. It says, right. it says, I'm sorry, you got it, brother. No, 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 you, you got it. Brother? Okay, it says, and this is the condemnation or the judgment that light is coming to the world, and that light is Yahweh Shai. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So the wicked of our people, you love darkness. You love that unbelief 
You know, you love to be in a spirit of unbelief because your de deeds are evil. And you don't want your deeds to come to light. See, when you come to the light of Yahweh, you got to repent from that. So therefore, your sins are, are open. It's, you know, your marks are seen, preferably by Yahweh, Yahweh, but he sees that you're in a repentant state. And with that being seen, guess what? The Lord's going to share that mercy. But men don't want, they don't want to, they don't, they don't want to come into the light of the truth of Yahweh Bashram Shai. Why? And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light. And that's the truth. And the, the, the priest, the brother's going into about unbelief. Our people are in the spirit of unbelief. They hate the light. They hate the light because um, they love doing evil. When what is the evil? Breaking the laws and the commandments of Yahweh Bashim al Shai openly in closed doors, uh, loving to be in a spirit of sin and iniquity. You know, you're not complaining about the wickedness that's going on in this world. And it's, we we could be here all night going down a list of the things that are contrary to Yahweh Bashim al Shai are happening right here in front of us. You know, he says, for everyone that doeth evil, hateth light, neither come into the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And reproof is corrected. And a lot of Jake, they don't want correction. That's why they want you to lie to them. They'd rather hear a lie. They'd rather hear smooth words. It says in the NLT, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. And that's, that's the problem. Jake. They're in that spirit of unbelief. One, the Lord gave you that spirit. He put that heavy spirit of unbelief on you. It ain't for everybody. But just because he put it on you don't mean that he's not going to allow you to hear this word, to see this, to see this, the men speaking this word. But you're just not going to accept it because of spirit of unbelief. Like the brother was bringing out, you got people that see chariots and then they're like, no, nah, it ain't no chariot. That's some made up stuff. Or no, nah, it's, it's aliens in there. But all that shit you're talking about, you learn from a the most habitual liar on the planet Earth, Esau Edom, the so-called white man. You don't believe that you I saw some shit. I don't know if I still got it. I think I shared the video on TikTok on a, on a, on, on shared the video on WhatsApp from TikTok where this Jake was talking about the um the uh the Bible was written by Phoenicians, you know, straight up a straight spirit of unbelief, man. You know. But you got it, brother. No, yeah. Now, um, as you were reading, you know, uh, what what was that? Uh, Saint John, chapter uh, six, John or chapter, chapter three. three. Yeah, yeah, kind. So <clears throat> it said that what that in in verse eighteen it says, uh, "He that believeth in him, he that believeth in him is not condemned, but he that believeth is." That he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And, you know, as you were reading that, you know, I, I was looking at uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 8, where it says that, you know, Yahweh Shai is, is the mediator of, of that new covenant. You know, we were we were condemned before Yahweh Shai. We were condemned by <clears throat> by by what? By the law. You know, so the heavenly Father sent Yahweh Shai as a, a as an atonement. You know, as a as a you know, as a matter of fact, I have the definition here of, of mediator. It says, uh, uh, mediator, a person who attempts to make people involved in a conflict come to an agreement, a go between." And then you have similar words, which out of these, well, it says arbitrator, negotiator. Uh, conciliator, which this is what you know, Yahweh Shai is for us and the Heavenly Father. Man, we were in conflict with the Heavenly Father. Why? Because we sinned against Him. We broke the covenant that we made through sacrifice with the Heavenly Father. Man, so we were pretty much uh, dead. You know, our, our judgment was to what to to be destroyed by the Heavenly Father for breaking that covenant. But the Heavenly Father, through His mercies, through His great mercy, sent Yahweh Shai. That whosoever believed in in in, in Yahweh Shah, which is the word of the Most High, uh, was to be uh, forgiven of their sins, man. If they continued in this truth and believed, you know, uh, in what the Lord came to preach, 
which was what? Uh, to repent and, 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 and believe that what? That the Heavenly Father was going to reward us with what? With that, with salvation first and foremost. And, and you know, the, the, the kingdom, immortality, all those things. If what? If we kept believing in him and doing the works. Because our people stopped doing the, 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 the righteous acts, stopped rehearsing the, right, the righteous acts. And we're doing wickedly, you know, following after the heathens, following after their own mind. And Yahweh Shai came to, to what? To shine light upon those, you know, uh, wicked deeds, man. And that's what our people hated, that Yahweh Shai came to reprove their, their actions, man. To, to correct them, to tell them, like, look, you're, you're doing this out of hypocrisy. You're, you're pretending that you love the Lord and, and you're doing the opposite. And this is what's going on all over again today with Christianity, Catholicism, and even people that call themselves Israelites. And, 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 you know, say they follow the law and, you know, they're part of the 12 tribes. They're doing the same things, man. And when you're doing this, you're making that sacrifice that the, that the Heavenly Father's Son did for us. You make, you're making it um, uh, um, in vain. You know, I mean, you're making, it, you're making it seem like that sacrifice was in vain because, what, you're doing the same thing that the Lord doesn't want you to do. You know, so let, let me read this in Hebrews 8. It says, Hebrews 8 and 6, but now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. So Yahweh Shah is the one that's, you know, intervening for us, making a, a, a you know, a, a truce, or is the one that's, yeah, is that correct? Truces? Or how do you, how do you, uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Yahweh Shai is the one that's that's making uh he's the mediator. He's trying to make a a truce between us and the heavenly father, you know, Israel yeah. and the heavenly father. You know, it says which was he's, established he's upon Peter. He, he, uh, like he's made that he's made that uh he's made he he's closed that breach between uh, the, the children of Israel and the most high, but it's only starting with the elect. You know, him sacrifice, right. him shedding his blood on that cross, uh, um, brought the children of Israel back to the Most High through his son. So through Yahweh Shai, what we are adopted again, you know? That's right. Now it's playing out. We're in a time where it's playing out. But made to sacrifice Salakia, 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 with Salakia, the Heavenly Father. Salakia, that, uh, that sacrifice he made, it closed the breach that was there. It was a gap between us, between the Most High and us. And what was that gap? Our sin and our iniquity. And then right. by Yahweh Shai doing what he did, he, he closed it and brought us back together with the Most High. You know, we're not perfect, so we have a mediator. We have to go to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai to get to the Most High, that he can deal with us. That's why everything we ask, believing in Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai, in the name of Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai, which is in the name of Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, then he can hear us. In the ancient world, the Most High dealt with us personally. He would get a prophet, raise a prophet up, and he would talk to us via the prophets. And then you had the you had the the priest, the high priest, when the temple was erected, he would go through these different rituals to cleanse himself, sacrifice, uh, ask for forgiveness of his sins first, and then uh, th for the sins of Israel. But we, through Yahweh Shai, he did that once when he sacrificed himself for us, for our sake. Okay? And that, and in doing so, that brought us to, uh, that closed that breach that we had. I'm sorry, Salak, I didn't mean to be wrong with it, brother. You got it. No, 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 you good. Yeah, so, you know, pretty much the, the that, if, if you look at it as a contract, you know, the, the, the heavenly father made a contract and Yahweh Shah was that, you know, that assurance that of, of that second covenant. And he did his part, you know, he laid up his life for us, you know, to, to receive repentance, uh, uh, forgiveness of sins, you know, and now we, as, as, you know, as we're called, we ought to do our part, which is what to believe unto the end so that we could receive the reward of, of, of that covenant. You know, which starts first and foremost with salvation, you know. So when you when you are 
when you have unbelief in your heart in your mind you're rejecting that 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 uh that covenant you know you're rejecting the 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 sacrifice that the lord's son did for us man and that's not a you know a light thing to do man you you're rejecting you're rejecting the only opportunity that the heavenly father gave you to to come back to him you know because you could only come to the heavenly father through yahweh shot you know and then some of these similar words that over here in unbelief that i found interesting it says heathenism you know because what what do the heathens do they believe in idols they believe in anything but in in, in the heavenly father why because it wasn't first and foremost wasn't given to them to believe in the most high and and also because all they know is wickedness man you know it says all oh, god yeah, godlessness it's yeah, like the heavenly father didn't give them the uh the breath of life that he gave our forefathers which was passed down to us which is the, the knowledge and wisdom of the truth of the scriptures of the of the laws such as commandments because if one would practice it, if we had an opportunity to practice it in full, we'd be super close with the most. I would be righteous in that, in that, in the sight of the Lord. And those those things weren't given to the heathen. So the heathen, they can't believe because, like the scripture says, like they're going to say, surely the most high is a power that hideth himself because they don't know him. So to them, it's like he's always been, he's been there, but he's been hiding. But to us, we know that the Heavenly Father and His Son have always been here. You know? That's right. Got it, brother. Kind. And then it says right here, um, uh, skepticism, cynicism. You know, which and and Jake, is, Jake is in that mindset all the time. And I got a, I got a video to uh, to line up with that, but go ahead. Kind. Uh, right here, the definition of skepticism, it says a skeptical attitude or doubt as to the truth of something you know and like you mentioned earlier our people they they'll take anything esau says and 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 take it as as the truth even if he's lying his ass off they'll just be like okay esau said it we'll believe it but when it comes to the scriptures and, and you read the scriptures to our people they have doubt They they have the skeptical attitude of like, well, why would God do this? Or I don't believe God is gonna do this, that he's gonna destroy Babylon the Great, or he's gonna destroy his people. But let Esau tell him that, you know, that they lost they they found uh some ancient uh tablets and talking about the Anunnakis and all this BS, and Jake get up and become experts in, in the whole Anunnaki and all that BS theories that Esau give him you see it's it's, it's only doubt uh, a doubtful spirit doubt as to the truth of what of Yahweh you know and that's gonna get you yeah. uh, destroyed yep hey, that's, uh, let me share this video real quick brother Give me a second. Hold on. just stop sharing uh share screen you can see this right here let me know if you can hear it yeah that... sorry say that again brother no nah, that's that jake that i tell you that i hate the one on the right that motherfucker be talking man yeah. shit thinking he's all fucking knowledgeable and shit fucking jake man that nigga don't know shit, man. And he got those dead eyes. He, nigga look like he just woke up. That nigga still sleep, man. Just like the nigga on the left. <laughs> like the nigga on the left. Let me play the Who game. wrote the Bible? I've never gotten the right answer since I've asked that question. Every time I ask them face to face, who wrote the Bible? They don't have no idea. They start telling me the 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 the, uh, the apostles' names. You know, Judas and and John and all these. No, they wrote nothing. Those men were illiterate, man. They couldn't even read or write. They were illiterate people. The Bible was written from 100. And that's, and that's and that's something that that's because they say they're not they're not well they they weren't well learned. They that's why he assumes that they were illiterate, which they weren't. 
Like they just was just, you know, first of all, our people have been documenting things since the beginning of our era, of our, the Lord gave us understanding. It's just because, again, if it ain't, if you don't see the person sitting there doing something, he don't believe it. And then on top of that, the prophets had scribes. All the prophet had to do, matter of fact, Salaki, real quick. I'll let this play and I'll, and I'll, and I'll follow, find the scripture real quick. 100 AD to 900 AD by phenomenal of the apostles names you know judas and, and john and all these no they wrote nothing those men were illiterate men they couldn't even read or write they were illiterate people the bible was written from 100 a.d to 900 a.d by phenotians followers of hermes both the atlantean priest king that's who wrote the bible and they didn't write a bible what they did was they started copying ancient texts from all over the world remnants of the library of alexandria copying these ancient texts onto different parchment papers and stuffing them inside of vases and jars inside of caves. Over time, between 100 AD to 900 AD, people, explorers and archaeologists coming across these vases and opening them up, finding all these ancient writings. These ancient writings were copied from, okay, let me translate this tablet onto this writing, onto this uh, parchment paper, uh, and, and then I'm going to store it away. All right, so real quick, real quick, I have this right here. It's uh, uh, hold on. This is uh, I'm gonna share it in a second. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. This is uh, what is this? Uh, scribe. Ancient Edris, the scribe. Okay, look, we know that Edris was a was a prophet, but he's also was a scribe too. Now, what is it? What is the term scribe mean? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna share it in a second. I just wanna uh, share this. Hold on. Stop sharing. This is a uh, share. Let's check this out. So a scribe is a person who copies out documents, which is basically you write them out. It says, especially one employed to do this before printing was invented, a secretary, a clerk, a transcriber, right? So he, this guy said that none of the, first of all, the Bible is inspired by the word of the heavenly father. He gives it to a man and then the Lord has men write it down. And I was trying to find a precept where it said that uh, address, um, like Baruch, and other scribes uh, wrote, um, I think it says daily. Let me see, Apocalypse. I, I remember it's a precept when a Baruch and others, Baruch and, hold on. Just bear with me, but anyway, I can't find it right now, but I'm gonna find it. But this is this is uh second. I'm in first Edris chapter eight, verse uh verse. I'll start at uh one. Salaki, Salaki. Um, this is uh this is uh first Edris chapter eight verse one. It says, and after these things, when Artaxerxes the king of the Persians resigned, came Edris the son of Cyrus the son of Azarias, the son of Helikiah, the son of Salem, the son of Sadu. I'm going to skip down, verse three. This Edris went up from Babylon as a scribe. And we're reading the book of Edris. Being very ready in the law of Moses that was given by the power, by the power or God of Israel. So like I was saying earlier, the word of the heavenly father came by the, by the word of the Most High. And men wrote it down. They jotted it down. They had to jot certain things down. Certain things were written down in the book. Well, it says it right here. Uh, first address, I mean, second address, chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Where do the words of prophecy come from? The heavenly father. And he gives it to his prophets, which I will put in thy mouth. See? So he put these words in our mouths. We don't We don't just come up with this stuff. Me and his brother, we say this all the time. We didn't sit down and say you know what sometimes you know you go you read and you might pull a couple tabs 
But a lot of these tabs, a lot of these scriptures that's coming out, it's coming from the inspiration of the Most High. This is not our will, you know? So it says, I will put, put it in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So the Lord put these words of prophecy in our mouth to what? To tell the Israelites and cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. So it's like it's like you're a transcriber. Somebody speaking and you writing it down. Somebody is like somebody is uh somebody's giving you dictatorship. So you writing it, you you hearing it and you writing it down. You're not you're not writing it as you see fit, you're not shorthanding it, you writing the words as it is given to you. Why? Because it said and cause them, meaning have them written in paper for they are faithful and true okay so it also says fear not the imagination against thee let not the incredulity dulity which is an unbelief that word for incredulity <clears throat> that word for incredulity okay is uh it says the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something so the, the lord said what don't let the inability of these Israelites that don't believe, don't let that trouble you. So don't let, uh, let not the incredulity or unbelief of them, who is them, the Israelites, not all of them, but a, a great majority of them trouble thee, that speak against thee, like this Nick, like this fool, like this guy right here. You know, you'll give, you'll give, you'll give these idols more uh, credit than you would give your how about shine, how was shy. You give, the heathen more credit than you give your how about Shemiah was shot. You know, you attribute to that. Look, who wrote the Bible? You niggas go to school and you you go to school and you you turn the pages of thousands of books. You turn the pages of thousands of books. You don't give a damn who writes them books. You don't, you ain't sitting saying, you know what, he wrote this book. And a lot of times these authors that you believe in in this world, they ain't even write the fucking book. They had somebody else, they had ghost writers, man. You know? But it's, that's, that's that's what a nigga would do. A unbelieving these are uh, these are two unbelieving niggas. Niggas get on TikTok and he's pointing to the other guy like he's speaking some facts and truth. But in reality, this nigga is filled with unbelief, man. And that's why we don't let this kind of shit trouble us, man. You know, that nigga is completely filled with unbelief and sarcasm. And and the other word that the brother used earlier, skepticism. You know. But why is he a skeptic? Because he hasn't been given the spirit of belief. Real quick, this is um, uh, Romans 11 and 7. Romans 11 and 7. Because, see, niggas get all deep or call themselves getting deep in this so-called knowledge, which is uh, wickedness. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. You know, Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not attained that which he seeking for? But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The only the elect is going to get this hundred percent truth. Will believe it. Will accept it. Won't have any problem uh, reciting it and, and and teaching others who were able to to uh, comprehend. The elect is going to see this. What are, what are they what are they receiving? The truth. And Jake, all Jake is always constantly looking for the truth. That's why a nigga will get all deep, call himself getting deep, put a two second video. On get a put a microphone in front of his face, a two second video up or a three minute video and think that it's true and, and what he's saying is true. You niggas ain't gonna look this up. You just gonna go get you gonna get that weed, you're gonna smoke that weed, you're gonna get high, fall back, and be like, see man, I told you, I told you them niggas is telling you that you gotta understand these niggas are making shit up. Come on, what the fuck out of here, man? Egypt wasn't the first fucking society that came about. Greek uh the Greek nation wasn't the first so-called literate nation, all right? When you read Josephus, when you look at the history, our forefather Abraham, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, Shai, brought much wisdom to Egypt, man. Them motherfuckers couldn't even get along with each other until Abraham got up there and started talking to them and testing to see if their gods matched up with the God, the God that he served, which was Yahweh Bashanah Shai, okay? He brought them arithmetic. He brought them, he brought them uh, knowledge of the stars. And how did Abraham get that? Through the inspiration of the Lord. And I'll pass it to you after this. This is the book of, um, this is the book of, what is it? Second Timothy. 
chapter, uh, let, me see. let me see. It might be First Timothy. But let's go to first. Let me see. Yep, here it is right here. Second Timothy, the body of Yahweh, Shalom Shah, 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And not only does Esau hate instruction in righteousness, two-thirds of our people hate instruction in righteousness. Right here in the NLT, all scripture is inspired by the Most High and, and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So how, how is this a plagiarized book? What other nation's books tell you what to do is right and correct you when you do something wrong? It don't matter if these nations came before us. Them niggas came with a lie. They didn't come with the truth. They didn't come with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Okay, and what you think is knowledge and wisdom and understanding is not, which is basically that 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 wickedness. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this video real quick and then I'll, I'll shoot it right back to you. This nigga is fucking crazy, man. Con and and real quick, if uh, yeah. you know the uh, you know the apostles always say that these you know these uh, other philosophers philosophies. And doctrines, man, they're like stagnant waters. Why? Because it, it doesn't lead you anywhere, man. And all that knowledge that this dude has, wh where is it going to lead you? Is, you're still going to get be destroyed, you know, because at the end of the day, you're not bringing forth nothing that, that brings life, man. Everything this dude is saying is pretty much just like, oh, yeah, everything that, that Esau, in, 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 in lamest terms, everything that Esau is saying is, is the truth. And we just gotta keep living in this fucked up world. That's pretty much what you're saying, right? Yep. And that's what what these gods want you to believe. These so called gods, these idols, man. That you just gotta accept living in this fucked up world, and 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 you know, and that's it. You, death, death is your rest. Well, once you die, then you'll get a reward and go to wherever the hell they believe they're gonna go into. And have an eternal rest or have whatever it is that they're saying, which is retarded, man. You think uh, yep. uh, the creator of, of, of everything, of the universe, meant, meant for the world and, and his creation to be this fucked up? Hell no, man. What, what, what kind of almighty power is going to create something to, to, to bring forth death and only death? You see? Yeah. And the only one that the only book that gives you the answer to to all the questions is life in life is the scriptures. The only thing is that it's being manipulated through by by Esau to what to 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 confuse our people, man. Why is it that the the the, the holy scriptures is used everywhere and everything to inaugurate a precedent to when when you know there's times of trouble? Why is the Bible the the, the number one selling book? Why is everybody referencing the Bible for for knowledge for for everything, man? Because those words are, are like um, you read earlier. The, the the words are true, man. And it's just because you have a spirit of unbelief that that you can't get it. Ultimately, the Lord put that spirit upon you, but that doesn't make the the, the word of of Yahweh with, without effect, man. Because at the end of the day. Everything that was written in the scriptures is coming to pass. So how can you disprove that? How come none of these other so-called religious experts and 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 you know these uh, people that focus in uh, what's that religion of Egypt? Uh, I forgot the name. Um, A bunch of religions in Egypt. Yeah, kind of all these religions. How come? Their gods aren't warning you about the destruction to come. The MOTB, all these plans that the elites have to, to, to control you. You see, because there's no wisdom in those things, man. Like the elder brought earlier, the, the, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Yep. Yeah, it says right here, I can't, I, I was trying to find this precept right here. But it says right here, finally, there, there is a vision of restoration of, of scripture. God appears to Ezra 
in a bush and commands him to restore the law, Ezra Gazra gathers five scribes and begins to dictate. After 40 days, he has produced 94 books, the 24 books of the Hebrews Bible and 70 secret works, which is he is not to reveal to the masses. This vision is omitted in the Latin translation and text. And as these Edomites do, they omit things. But it says, um, let me see. He took five scribes. I'm trying to find that precept because I've read it before. I read it before. Uh, let me see. Five scribes. All right. And I can't. It says uh, it didn't show up. Let me hold on. So I can maybe um, maybe I can find it right here. But I was trying to find that preset. If brothers on the comment board could help out and try to find it, let me see. Um, there's, there's a, yeah, there's five scribes. Um, yeah, for some reason I can't find that preset, but I know they wrote day and night for 40 days. The Heavenly Father and restored the scriptures to Ezra for 40 days and 40 nights. Right here. The 70 apocryphal books. Uh, let me see. Forty. Yeah, I can't find it, brother. I know it's in this precept, though. I've read it. I've seen it. I read it with my own eyes, man. Yeah, I know it's in Second Ezra. Uh, maybe they said that he, he wrote all, all night, all day, all night. They were writing. I cannot find it. I'm trying to find it because I know that's going to be super edifying to this lesson. Um, address. Right. Here it is right here. The water you have on your side. Second address oh, yeah. chapter 14. Verse 24, second address, chapter 14, verse 24, right? Yeah, yeah man, and you gotta, you know, you gotta put it in perspective. If the, the Lord is showing Ezra's, you know, these visions after fasting, you know, and these weren't like just light visions, man. You, you hear testimonies of people having, you know, or dreams or, or nightmares that are like relatively light compared to what Ezra and the prophet saw. And they say that what, that they wake up. I've never had one before, but you know, brothers have testimonies and you know, my wife, she has visions as well here and there. And they say that what, that you wake up like, like if you just ran a fucking marathon sweating and your body feels heavy, you know, you could attest to that. Uh, but but yeah, you know. So imagine writing all this knowledge after just having these crazy visions. Yeah. You need it. Yeah, yeah, whenever you how about you know, gave me visions, I would wake up with headaches, man. You know, my head be throbbing. You know what I'm saying? Because it'd be, it'd be that heavy. And now that's that's mild compared to what Daniel and Edris had. Edris said he was sick, man. He was terrified. And so he, this and is he was uh, fasting for days. Yep, yep. Because when you fast, you get closer to your how about you was shy. So it says this second edge chapter 14, verse 23. You can see the screen, brother. Con. Con. It says, and he answered me, saying, Go thy way, gather the people together, and say unto them that that they seek thee not for 40 days. It says, um, verse 25, 24. But look thou, prepare thee many boxes, tree, many box trees, and take with thee Saria, uh, Dabaria, Salemia, Arrhenius, and Azael, these five which are ready to write 
swiftly, right? It says, and come hither, and I shall light a candle of understanding in thy heart. So the Lord gave, the Lord gave Edris the spirit of understanding in his mind. While he was speaking, these visions, these words, the scribes were, were to transcribe what he wrote. I mean, what he was speaking. It says, which shall not be put out till the things be performed, which thou shalt begin to write. It says, and when thou has done, something shalt thou publish, and something shalt thou show secretly to the wise. Tomorrow, this hour shalt thou begin to write. And it says, then went I forth as he commanded, and gathered all the people together and said, hear these words, O Israel. Our fathers at the beginning were strangers in Egypt from whence they were delivered. And he received the law of life, which and, and received the law of life, which they kept not. And that's what this word is. Which ye also have transgressed after them. Then was the land, even the land of Zion, parted among you by lot, by your fathers. And, and this is, you can find all this in the scriptures, man. And see yourselves have done unrighteousness and have not kept the, the ways which the highest commanded thee. Let me skip down. It says, and as for uh, uh, as for the, I'll keep on reading. And it says, um, and for as much as he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing that he had given you, which was the law, which is this understanding, which is the truth. We we end up losing all of that. And what are we telling you? Hey, that through Yahweh Shai, he has restored these things to us, man. Okay. And now are you here and your brethren amongst you? Um, I just want to read this. 33. How far along is this chapter? Yeah, and, and, and real quick to add to that, you know, the, the, the Lord took our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which if you go to, you know, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, it tells us that was going to be our you know, the, the the thing that made us greater than these nations, man. The the righteousness of Yahweh by Shema Osha, which is within the scriptures, man. But now Jake, you know, wanna uh gather knowledge from who? From Esau, man. You know, yeah. everybody knows that 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 Esau has pretty much uh, manipulated history to to make it seem like he's, you know, the the the, the greatest nation to ever exist. You know, and Jake still want to believe whatever they say, man. Whether it's in, uh, whether it's a religious context or whether it's you know a historical context, everything you're getting pretty much from Esau, man. If you go to 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 these general, you know, uh, Edomite own uh, facilities, you know, schools and whatever. But there is knowledge that that proves that what that Yahweh Shemuel Shai's knowledge was fact, man. And through the Spirit, we believe in the book, man. First and foremost, and we just use the other stuff as reference. Yep. That's right. So lock your brother in a second. Yeah, man, so that spirit of unbelief, it ain't going to do nothing but have you destroyed until you see it. Because, see, some people got to believe it to see it. But there's some people on the earth that don't have to believe it to see it. And that some people is the elect of Israel. And as you can see from that video, not all not all Israel is of the elect. That dude's an Israelite, but he's a non-believing Israelite. And then you got Israelites that know that they're Israelites, and they still don't believe, you know? That's so right. it says verse 34, therefore it be so that you you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts. You shall be kept alive, and after death you shall obtain mercy. That's right. For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous and, and, and then happen. It says, After death, after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again. And that we're in that lifetime now. And the judgment is coming. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. And that's what's happening. 
All right. It says, uh, verse 36, verse 36, I'm sorry, 35. For after death, uh, oh, I, I read this, verse 36. Let no man therefore come unto me now, nor seek after me these 40 days. And it says, so I took the five men as he commanded me, and we went into the field and remained there. And he says, in the next day, behold, a voice called called me saying, Edris, open thy mouth and drink that I give thee to drink, which is what? That fountain of living water that Yahweh spoke about. The truth. Then open out my mouth and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full of it as if it were with water, but the color of it was like fire, which is the word. And I took it and drank. And when I had drunk it of it, my heart uttered understanding. And that's what happened with us. And look, hey, Barak, that's 2nd Edges 14 and 40, 144, man. It says, and, and, and I took it and drank. And when I had drunk it, my heart uttered understanding. Like, like the scripture says, eat the whole roll. Okay? You eat the whole roll, you accept in the whole roll. You know, you got Jake that want to eat part of the roll. You got Jake that want to drink the whole cup. I mean, drink some of the cup, but not all the cup. No, but you got to take the whole thing. And after you do that, you're going to what? You're going to utter understanding. And wisdom grew in my breast. My spirit strengthened my memory. So he started remembering things from the past. He started remembering things that are the words that the, were being written to him. Like us. Like, you know, brother, sometimes you might be standing out there and the, mem the precepts jump right in your head. Your memory is sharpened. You know? And my mouth was open and shut no more. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not, because they didn't have a vision. Edges would get having a vision. But he was speaking these words, and they understood what he was saying, and they wrote it down, which they knew. Uh, Jeremiah had a, a scribe, which is Baruch, which he has a book in his, in his, in his, in the, in the, in the Bible too. It says, which they, and that were, it says, the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not. And they sat 40 days and they wrote in the day. And at night they ate bread. So they wrote all day and at night they ate. So this guy, where is this nigga at? This nigga, he, he's talking foolishness, man. I see why the brother can I hate this nigga, man. You know, because the nigga <laughs> oh, like this, he got to be taken out. But he's an example. Of a great number of our people, two thirds of you Israelites are in the same spirit of unbelief, and you'll see some shit like this real quick, a three minute video, and then you'll think that it's a whole bunch of truth, and there's no truth to it. There's no truth to that shit. There's no truth to the what that nigga was saying. This nigga just he just speaking out of his heart, and his heart is wicked. Cross these caves. Remnants of the Library of Alexandria copying these ancient texts. I've never gotten the right answer since I've asked that question. Every time I ask them face to face who wrote the Bible, they don't have no idea. They start telling me the the the, the, uh, the apostles' names, you know, Judas and, and John and all these. No, they wrote nothing. Those men were illiterate men. They couldn't even read or write. They were illiterate people. The Bible was written from 100 AD to 900 AD by Phoenicians, followers of Hermes, both the what what are you serious? Are you fucking serious, man? Ain't no ain't no ain't, ain't. these the apostles, the prophets, the men of the Lord were not followers of fucking Hermes, man. And if they were, they repented from that and they started being followers of Yahweh's was shot. Bible was written from what these men that are written in his precepts feared Yahweh was shot, man. What and like the brother said earlier, what the fuck in Egypt, Egyptology, that shit. With that came from Esau. What in that tells you about what's happening in the future today, and what's going to happen? What's happening in the present now, and what's going to happen in the future today, tomorrow? You know what I'm saying? Like nothing. That's right. AD to real quick. Yeah. Oh, uh, and 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 Hermes. If you look at you know uh, uh, who Hermes is, Hermes is a god that supposedly you know, stole 
you know, um, what was it? The the fire from from heaven or something like that? Let me see real quick. Or Hermes. As oh, I should have tapped. Okay, so like it. Wait, I might Shit. Let's see real quick. Is it Hermes? That he also considered yeah, that's the protective. Oh. Oh no no no! I got him confused with uh, was that that statue that's in uh the Rockefeller Center? It's uh, Prometheus. No, Prometheus. I think that that's who it is. All right, so like you know, I I confused the 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 idol that they just mentioned. By Phoenicians, followers of Hermes, both the Atlantean priest king. That's who wrote the Bible, and they didn't write a Bible. What they did was they started copying ancient texts from all over the world, remnants of the Library of Alexandria, copying these ancient texts onto different parchment papers and stuffing them inside of vases and jars inside of caves. Over time, between 100 AD to 900 AD, people, explorers and archaeologists coming across these vases and opening them up, finding all these ancient writings. These ancient writings were copied from, okay, let me translate this tablet onto this writing, onto this uh, parchment paper, uh, and, and then I'm going to store it away, right? They would study these things and read them inside of caves in the middle of the night and stuff like that. And the proof is in what? the pudding. How do you know that, nigga? Was you there? Was you there? This nigga just talking, bro. And that's why two-thirds of you niggas and niggas will be destroyed, man. Everything that come out of this dude's mouth is nothing but nonsense, man. But like the Lord said, not the anchor doodly of dumb trouble, you man. Don't let it bother you that these niggas are fucking simple. And like the scripture says, the the the, the simple believe of every word, but the prudent search out all things, man. Roughly paraphrasing, man. Don't let these these niggas. What the fuck is this nigga talking about? A whole bunch of nothing, man. You know, a whole <laughs> bunch of absolute nothing. Where ask this nigga where he learned this bullshit at? Oh, I, I read books. I read texts. You go, you you look at the fucking uh uh, what's that? The Book of the Dead or that shit that these people believe in? Them Egyptologists believe in. Egyptians believe in. They didn't believe in Yahweh Bashimasha, but they knew. Him. You know when they did believe when he brought that wrath upon the ass. And even Pharaoh asked Moses to say a prayer for him to put in a good word for him. You know uh uh, what's that dude uh, Epiphanes the fourth. Uh, what was, his, what was his name? Uh, Ante, Ante, Antiochus or Antiochus Epiphanes the Fourth. He 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 didn't believe on the Most High until he got sick, and then he said he wanted to try to convert and be a Jew. And the Lord ain't showing him no mercy, man. Just like he killed Pharaoh, he destroyed Esau. I mean, you know, he is an Edomite. Just like he killed Pharaoh, he he killed uh, Ant, Antiochus Epiphanes the Fourth, man. You know, you see a nigga like him want to rock you back to sleep. Back you back back to uh Egypt land. Niggas got a love affair with Egypt because Esau taught you that. Yeah, yeah, what uh Franz Boaz, people like that, you know, to taught you taught you about Edom, Egypt, and now all of a sudden you niggas are super deep. All of a sudden the, the Bible was never stolen from no man. Okay. No, no heathen right. nation. Hell no. Like the scripture says right here, and uh was it first Peter? I think it's first Peter one and 21. Or one and 20. Let me see. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter one. Because everybody always talk about well, who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Bible? Who wrote it? Hey, the words of Yahweh Bashanah was shy. Put this book together. And had men transcribe the words that were being spoken into the by the prophets. This word is this this book is the word of Yahweh Bashanel Shai, which is infallible. There's no you can't mess it up. People try to take away things, they try to add things, but the truth is always the truth. That's this right. is and first if you, Peter. Yep. 
So like, and, and, and if you look at all these ancient civilizations, man, none of them followed after the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Like the, the scripture in Second Ezra says, oh, thou shalt know that uh, only Israel by name has followed that commandments, but not the heathens. All these civilizations that this fucking idiot is saying the Bible stole the content from, none of them followed after, after the law, statutes, and commandments that are within the scriptures, man. Showing you is is a bunch of BS this dude is talking about. That's right. So this is uh Second Peter one and twenty. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of, of any private interpretation. That's right. So that nobody just made this up in their own mind. It says all above you you must. It says all above all you must realize that no prophecy in the scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. So. These prophecies that are written about in the scriptures, they weren't, they, first of all, the prophets didn't just make them up out of their own, own mind. Second of all, they didn't take them away from any other nation and put it in a in a book, in a binding. And, and, and this word was in scrolls. When our ancient forefathers had it, it wasn't a book like we got today. It was different scrolls of different prophecies. But when, when it was broken, when it was rewritten, when it was written in the King's English, it was broken down in the chapters, all right? But that's not how the scriptures was written in the beginning. It was the words of prophecy. Particular prophets had it written down. They transcribed it through the power of Yahweh Bashem Messiah, and it was rolled up, okay? You weren't able to categorize. like It wasn't like verse. They weren't written in. The Bible wasn't written in verses. It was just the word. But it was broken down eventually over time. And that's better so you can understand it today. And it says, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. All right. It says, um, it says, uh, yeah, that was good right there. Let me keep on reading. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And as they spoke, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, scribes wrote it down. It says, it says, or from human initiative, no, th those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from the Most High. It says, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of the Most High spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and, so, and the Holy Spirit, Salakia, like brother, to interrupt you, and uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, is what gives us our, our righteous understanding, you know, because these, these, other, uh, these other people, especially the, the heathen nations, man, their customs is to do what wickedness man so they're into doing you know drugs and all these you know uh, wicked acts man and that that spirit that's upon them guides them to do what to do wickedness and 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 it gives them knowledge of what of wickedness you see esau he's what he's a a, a, a devil worshiper so doing his practices a, a spirit tells him okay write this down write this write these like if, if you take a look at you know witchcraft how was witchcraft how are all those rituals and all those sacrifices that that warlocks and witches how were they how did they come to pass because these heathen nations started worshiping idols and worshiping things doing wicked things and the spirit of the that evil spirit fell upon them and they thought of those things okay boom and they were inspired by wickedness to do what? To write wicked things. So the Holy Spirit deals with, with the uh, with the men of the Heavenly Father, the uh, holy men, to what? To, to scribe righteousness. And that's how the word of the Heavenly Father came to pass, man. Our people were given the first and foremost the, the verbal uh, law, you know, and we were practicing it. And the more we practice it, the more we practice it, the more the Holy Spirit fell upon our, our, our prophets, man, you know, and then the, the Lord started giving visions. And, and like you, we mentioned before, the Lord used to deal with us directly before. So he, he told Moses everything. 
and there was righteous men amongst you know our people that practiced the law you know and and and, and the spirit was upon them to write things man so the same thing when Yahweh Shai came who 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 was his uh, uh disciples the ones that became apostles and they through the practice and rehearsing of the act righteous acts the spirit fell upon them and they wrote what what the heavenly father you know told them through the spirit yeah if like that that's was why you got, like a clear that's explanation why, that's why you got the book of matthew you got the book of luke these are different these was these are different men different well, well i don't think luke was a uh, he wasn't a disciple he wasn't an apostle but he was a transcriber he was fired, right so he they wrote down the same exact story it came from that particular perspective but it's the same exact story you know it might be told a little different but it's the same story it's the same truth it lines up with mark luke john matthew you know so matthew luke mark or matthew mark luke and john you know those all those add up they speak about the life of yahweh shot and they go back to his heritage his lineage from his father to talk about his mother and luke he talks about his moms but it all lines up as the scripture says no man shall want her mate about the scriptures can you get that piece up brother Uh, this is the book of Isaiah 34 and 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, <clears throat> No one of these shall fail, none shall want her maid, for my and mouth what, is, it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Can you get it in the uh, NLT? Yeah, I can get it in um in the nlt all right um i say at 34 and 16 nlt it says search the book of the lord and see what he will do no one of these birds and animals will be missing and none will lack a mate for the lord has promised this or his spirit will make it all come true go go up go all the way back up to the top Uh, yeah, search, uh, read, uh, the, in the new KJV. NIV. Actually, look at the, uh, look at, read the NIV, the NIV. Okay. Um, it says, look in the scrolls of the Lord and read, none of these will be yeah. missing. Not one yeah. will lack her mate, for mm -hmm. it is his mouth that has given the order and his spirit yeah. will gather them together. Right. So these different, even the different chapters the different books, they, this is none shall what one none shall uh my will be missing yeah nothing shall be yeah it says uh look at the scroll of the lord and read none of these will be missing nothing's missing it all lines up not one will lack her mate so you go to you go to luke and you go to matthew and something line it'll line right up and you can go to isaiah and go and or jeremiah and then you can go to hebrews it line right up so none shall want to meet Remember, you have to, the, the Bible is a puzzle, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's how you read it. It has to be decoded. Okay. And Esau can't decode the scriptures because he ain't got the spirit of the Lord on. All right. It take men of the Lord to get, to teach you this word. All right. And we all come from, a, 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 a we come in from a, a a point of view of truth it's not our point of view it's the point of view of the most high but it's the truth it's this it's, it's, uh the brother gms ha uh psalm 68 and 11. the lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it man you see great was the company of those that published it the lord gave his word and you niggas always ask about who wrote the bible even if you Understood who wrote the Bible, you still ain't gonna respect the author, nigga. You don't respect the how about you, Alvashai. 
real quick. This is uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 3, 3, verse 1. What advantage have the Jew? I'm going to read this in the NLT first. Yeah, and, and ultimately that's, that's you know, Jake not having fear of the Most High because, you know, they believe Esau. Why? Because Esau is ruling this world. So going against Esau means that what? That pretty much, hey, you can't be part of the society, man. You know? Yep. So they just repeat everything that Esau says to, to, to be so-called... Uh, like he said, literate in this world and be somebody in this world, because yeah, in reality, you, I'm sorry. Because in in reality, if if you want to be part of this world, man, you got to accept all the BS that Esau tells you. You got to believe in in uh, evolution. You got to believe in the wicked laws and the wicked history Esau has is it, trying to teach you, and then you become a, a somebody once you get a mastery. A, a, a master or a master or a PhD, whatever. You, bachelor, a master degree, a PhD. Yeah, you got to do what? You got to sign, you know, a, a, a pack, do a, a pledge to a fucking idol. You see? Yeah, that's right. There's Romans 3 and 1 in the uh, NLT. Then what? what's the advantage? Then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes. There are great benefits. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of the Most High. True, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they were unfaithful, does that mean that the Most High will be unfaithful? Of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar, the Heavenly Father is true. As the scriptures say about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win your case in court. All right? Going back to the, the KJV and the KJV, yep, Romans chapter 3 and the KJV, it says, What advantage didn't have the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High, which is the precepts, the truth, the knowledge, the laws, the statutes, commandments, all of that, the prophets. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Heavenly Father forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Right. And we are in court right now. Everybody's in court right now. Okay? Starting off with the Israelites. Some are going to get a pardon. Some are going to be... Uh, doomed for condemnation and judgment, especially those right. that are unbelieving, okay? All right, this is, uh, real quick, this is Mark. Yep, Mark chapter six, verse one, teaching in Nazareth. This is Yahweh Shai teaching in his own, his own place where he grew up at. He was born in Bethlehem, but when he moved back to Israel, he moved into Nazareth. And he says, and he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such a mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, son? So they looked at him as the carpenter's son. Is not just a carpenter. He was a carpenter. They knew him as a carpenter when he was living in, in Nazareth, man, before he went onto his ministry. He said, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended of him because they didn't respect him as the, as the Messiah. They didn't believe him as the Messiah, even though he did these things. But Yahweh said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And even we go through the same thing today. Our family don't believe that we're the prophets. Our fathers and mothers might be cool or they might not be cool with you, but they don't believe that you're a prophet of the Lord. Your own woman don't even believe it, man. 
And then your kids will grow up not believing it either. Oh, that's just my dad. Oh, he's he just whatever. Not realizing that you're a man of the Lord. And it says, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And why didn't he? Because right here. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. <laughs> I wish I was surprised. Like, man, all these miracles I'm doing in the name of my father, these, these niggas don't believe. These niggas are unbelief. He says in the NLT, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Yahweh Shai went from the village to the village to te teaching the people, man. So he shook the spot. He started moving it around because niggas ain't believe. And niggas ain't believe. He was like, I'm going to shake this spot, man. You got it, bro. And this, the, the same thing is happening now. If you look at, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, how, you know, you see brothers teaching and answering questions. People will come with all sorts of questions about the chariots, about war, about everything, about the scriptures, about life, how to overcome certain things. And brothers, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, give them the answers, but they still refuse to, to acknowledge the truth of Yahweh Bashim Shai. They're just like, nah, yep. but these guys are fucking, look at these guys in the street. They're fucking bums. I can't believe these dudes. So imagine how much more in, in the time of Yahweh Shah when he was performing all those miracles, man. You know, but we're going through the same thing. We we break down the scriptures to, to Jake, man, and answer their questions. And it's just like, they're just like, nah, like, I don't want to hear that. I'll hear anything else, but not what you're saying. And it's just yeah, like, what the nigga, fuck? These people are fucking tripping for real. Yeah, a nigga is concerned with the flesh only. <laughs> Niggas only concerned, well, how is that going to help me in my position now? I'm trying to get this money, man. How are you going to help me eat, man? We need to help our people get jobs and shit. We need to figure out a way to have group economics. You niggas ain't going to get group <laughs> economics. You think that's, that's why these other nations are thriving over you and you're not? Because of group economics. Supposedly, these niggas are going in a circle, putting their money together, and they and they just flicking it back and forth to each other before it leaves their own community. No, no, dumb people are above us because the scripture says that we will be below, and they will be the stranger that's within us shall get up very uh, high above thee. He shall be the head, and you gonna be the tail. And that's why you see in every strat stratus of society where so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are. Or people that come forth from us through their father's lineage, you're you're the, you're catching the ass into everything, man. Everybody's a fucking guru. I'm gonna tell you how to make fifty thousand dollars in thirty days. No, you not. I skip by all that shit. I don't even want to hear that shit, bro. Cause it's cat. If that was the case, you niggas wouldn't be telling nobody. Niggas are stingy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but the point of the matter is, like, like this brother had posted twelve tribes of Israel. But it says the most effective way to destroy people is to, is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. That's why you got this fake history. You got Egyptology. You got African history. You got all this fucking bullshit. They feed you that shit down your throat. But that's that's how they that's how they destroy you. But mainly giving you those delusions and lies, man. So yeah, that's all I had, brother. Kind of had all. Um... Real quick, well, I'll read up. This is uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. Uh, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, which this is speaking about, you know, Esau. And Esau is, is one of the, the main, uh, the main uh, contributors to the unbelief of our people, man, because he's the one feeding you all these lies, man. You know, and the Lord's what? He's revealing him through the spirit and power of Yah, uh, 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 through his spirit and power by the word, man, through the prophets. You know, it says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and sign and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and that's the two thirds of our people, man. You know, they believe all everything that Esau says, uh, but they don't believe the truth, which is the only thing that's that's 
given to you for life, man. Everything that Esau is teaching you and the heathens is for your own destruction, man. But here comes the Lord through his prophets giving you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, uh, a chance of repentance, but you don't want it, man. You know, you have that un un unbelieving spirit, that doubtful, skeptic spirit on you, man. It says, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. So because of your unbelief, because of your, your doubtful spirit, man, the Lord put the, those strong delusions upon you. And that dude that, you know, that the elder put up on the screen earlier on that video, man, that motherfucker has many strong delusions. And a lot of our majority of our people have the same thing, whether it's Christianity, Catholicism, Islam, whatever it is that they follow into. Following, you know, the, the Lord put that spirit on you because why? Because ultimately you don't believe in the Lord, man. It says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And like we started off the lesson, you know, we were going into what? That that the Lord came to shine light upon the 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 deeds of our people man which were unrighteous and our people you know take pleasure in that they like uh you know being idolaters they like committing adultery they like being thieves murderers liars because it seems like like this world uh, rewards them for that so they like it man and that's why they don't turn to yahweh Hashem shot you know, um, I had prosper. the wicked prosper in this world, man. That's when you right. see the wicked prosper, you think that, oh, they, they're doing the right thing, but you don't know they're being set up for a sore slaughter. Go ahead, brother. That's right. I had this is in uh, Hebrews, the third chapter. It says, The peril of unbelief. It says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be <clears throat> in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So, the, an evil mind of, of, of unbelief in departing from the living power, which that's that, that spirit that the two thirds of our people have. It says, but exhort one another daily while it's, what it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And this is what has happened to our people, man. You've been, your heart, your minds have been hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, which is what that, the, the BS that all these idols and religions uh, give you, man, that God loves you no matter what, come as you are. All that stuff is the deceitfulness of sin, man. They, they, they give you these religions that don't hold you accountable for none of your actions, man. It's just, oh, yeah, do whatever you want. There's, there's no consequences. God is never going to judge the world. Everything is, is fine, you know? And since you people love darkness rather than light you accept these as 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 truth but when the truth comes and tells you that you are responsible for your actions that you have to pay for 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 whatever it is that you do then you reject it why because that light is being shined upon you man that's why you know, um in the scriptures it says what well, prophesy unto us uh smooth things prophesy uh speak unto us uh deceit roughly paraphrasing you know, uh, verse 14, it says, for we are made partakers in Hamashiach if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is what it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. So we're, we're supposed to what? To lean unto the Lord, man. To what? To receive salvation, to receive a, 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 a pardon of our sins. For some, when we had heard, did provoke, howbeit, not all that came out of the out of Egypt by Moses, but with him, but with whom was he grieved forty years with the unbelieving of our people, man. The the, the all those that were murmuring and speaking against Yahweh by Hashem was shy. The Lord was, you know, grieved at those people, man. And what did he do? He destroyed them. And likewise, yep. this go round. What's going to happen with the unbelievers of our people, man? You're going to be destroyed. Because here you go, the Lord delivered us from, from, from a great captivity. And, you know, you had to go through a little, um, through a little 
some some rough patches in the wilderness, and then you started doubting. You're like, nah, man, we we were better off in captivity, pretty much. That that's that's what Jake was saying. And here again, the Yahweh Shai first and foremost, and the prophets come to you with a with with a message of hope of salvation, and you're like, nah, we don't see that coming. So we're better off here, uh, under our captors' wings. You see, oh, what is it? Oh, oh, Salakia, what was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. That's right, and all of you that that are unbelievers, you're not going to enter into Yahweh Bashim Yahweh rest the first go-round. You're going to have to what? Know it after death by pain. And that's part of the, the, the darkness of the unbelief, man. You you could believe in, in any religion, any, you know, uh, philosophy, but guess what? The, the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is still going to come to pass, man. That great day of judgment is coming. And none of those things are going to deliver you at the end of it all. So either you, you repent and come back to your power or you're going to die in, in your unfaithfulness, man. You're going to die in your sins. That's right. That's right. And it's not given to everybody to believe. That's why we don't get razzle dazzle when we see niggas like that dude we saw in that video, when we see Jake out here ignoring the word, walking by it, doing what they do. Because Jake... Always wait till it's too late to turn back to the Lord. That's why the scripture right. says, seek the Lord who is able to be found. And he's not found in these churches, synagogues of Satan that they have here. He's not found in these uh buildings made with hands. He's not found with these prosperity preachers and these false God that loves everybody preachers. He's not found yet. He's found right there on the highways and hedges. Starting with the apostles and the bishop, elders of Great Millstone, and the brothers on down teaching the same doctrine of 100% truth. You know, not everybody that says they're a prophet is a prophet. So you got to have that spiritual discernment to understand and know who's getting the truth. Because you got people that call themselves Israelites, and they don't even believe on Yahweh Bashim or Shah. They push in that spirit of Jesus Christ, the Most High and Christ blessed. They push in that spirit of Christ this and Christ that. Those are not believers, man. The true believers are going to exalt the name of Yahweh Bashim or Shah. Okay? Right. That was it. That's all you have, brother. Okay. Hey, so with that, we're going to give all praises and honor and glory. See Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, and Carpet Gosh. We give double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this word and truth to the fool and well. And salutations to our fellow Akin. Keep pushing, keep striving. We're almost out of here. Uh, a Shalom. Lord willing, next week we'll have a brother already all with us. And he'll be leading a lesson. So look, be on the lookout for that. And that was a shalom on to the next. Hey, shalom.